In today's video, we're going to be talking about basal cell carcinomas, which is a very common form of skin cancer. Some key features regarding basal cell carcinomas are that they are usually slow growing and localized to one place, but they may be known to spread or metastasize, but this can be quite rare. In the young population, common causes of basal cell carcinomas can be intense UV or sun exposure, but they are more commonly seen in the elderly Caucasian population. Basal cell carcinomas are cancers of the epidermal keratinocytes of hair follicles and the epidermis of the skin. We have mentioned a common cause is intense or chronic UV light exposure, which causes DNA to mutate in tumor suppressor genes of the sonic hedgehog pathway in keratinocytes. This sonic hedgehog pathway is a signaling pathway that transmits information to embryonic cells required for proper cell differentiation, which basically means that it's involved in the pathway of transformation of cells from one type to a different type. Mutations in the PTCH gene, tumor suppressor gene, and P53 gene can play a role in the development of basal cell carcinomas. There are three main types of basal cell carcinomas which we're going to talk about today. The first is known as nodular basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common subtype, and the common locations for this type can be in the head and neck area. Commonly it's seen on the face. It presents as a pimple-like lesion which doesn't heal, but it may also be prone to bleeding and it can be sore or itchy. Here is a picture of the nodular basal cell carcinoma. Key features are that it has a translucent pearly appearance, there is erythema or redness, telangiectasia and well-defined borders. Telangiectasia means you can see these dilated or broken blood vessels which are located near the surface of the skin. So that is visible at this pimple-like lesion. Sometimes these nodular basal cell carcinomas can be pigmented and usually when they start getting bigger we start to see ulcerations form so we see this crater-like appearance. Another type of basal cell carcinoma is known as the sclerotic basal cell carcinoma, also known as morphiform basal cell carcinomas. This is a more aggressive form of basal cell carcinoma. Often patients, they have a scar which doesn't really heal and sometimes it can even be unnoticed by the patient. Here is an example of what a sclerotic or morphiform basal cell carcinoma looks like. You can kind of see that the borders, they're not very well defined, which is one of the key features of this type of basal cell carcinoma. You don't really see that many clinical appearances as what I mentioned in the previous type, which is the main reason why sometimes they can go unnoticed. It is often erythematous, but also it can be a bit lighter compared to the surrounding skin. Um, usually this type of basal cell carcinoma can occur anywhere on the body, but the head and neck are the more common locations. And it's also been known that some of the other types of basal cell carcinomas may eventually over time differentiate and transition into the sclerotic or morphiform basal cell carcinoma. The last type I'm going to talk about is the superficial type and often it can be sometimes misdiagnosed as a patch of eczema or just some skin irritation. It looks like this red patch which can be itchy and sensitive and the borders, they're often well defined. This type can occur on the head, neck, trunk of the body. There's no telangiectasia but um, we can kind of see sometimes the borders can be slightly elevated or raised compared to the surrounding skin. Looking at the histopathology of basal cell carcinomas, we can pull up this slide here. We can see these basophilic uniform hyperchromatic cells. They're all clumped together in nests in the dermis and subcutis and this is one of the things that the pathologist will look for when they are analyzing biopsy samples of suspected lesions. Now in terms of the treatment of basal cell carcinomas, it depends on a variety of different factors. This depends on where this basal cell carcinoma is located, the type of basal cell carcinoma, the age of the patient, if they've had this kind of treatment before, and the overall health of the patient. One option of treatment is excision, so the tumor is excised with around four millimeters of margins, and this tissue is sent to the pathology lab, they'll evaluate it there. Um, this kind of treatment is usually done in the extremities or areas of the trunk. Another type of treatment is called electrodissociation and curatage. So 
what happens is you curette the tumor aggressively, you treat the area with electro desiccation, and you usually do about three cycles to make sure uh, you've done it effectively. Um, but this is more commonly done on the superficial and the nodular type of basal cell carcinoma. The third type of treatment is called Mohs micrographic surgery. This is actually the more effective method of treatment. Here what happens is the tumour is excised or removed with 1 to 2 millimetre margins and it's processed using the Mohs specific horizontal frozen technique. The purpose of this is to visualise the margins of the excised tissue and if the tumour is noted in that area then further tissue is removed in the direction of the present tumour. So wherever the side of the tumour is detected that's where further tissue is removed. So it's quite conservative in terms of tissue removal. Two other types of treatment include topical Imiquimod, which is a topical medication which is applied on the patient's skin. This is more for patients who can't undergo any surgical procedures. And the last method of treatment is something called photodynamic therapy. This is where we have light sources and light sensitive medication which is used to destroy the cancer cells.